morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Well, you guys seem to really like the facts about every starter and every legendary video, so we're back again with facts on every single mythical Pokémon. Let's get started. Mew probably has one of the most fascinating creation stories of all Pokémon. Mew was the very last Pokemon to be created for Generation 1, with Shigeki Morimoto making it just two weeks prior to Pokemon Red and Green's release. Not just the design, but the pixel art, the cry, and even the Pokedex entry. Everything about this Pokemon was crafted by this one man in the nick of time. At this point in time, Pokemon Red and Green had just finished the debugging process and only had roughly 300 bytes of space left. Other members of Game Freak told Morimoto not to touch the games at all since they didn't want to risk creating a catastrophic error so close to launch. But that didn't stop him from creating perhaps the most interesting glitch of all time. With Mew's existence in the game originally being a total mystery and only being accessed via a glitch, rumors spread like wildfire about how to obtain one. Of course, one of the most infamous rumors was Mew being under the truck in the Vermilion City Harbor. A truck most players completely miss because it requires you to skip the SSN quest entirely and come back much later in the game when you already have Surf. But doing so requires cheating or another glitch, there's no legitimate way to do this. So basically, this well-hidden and incredibly random truck became a massive point of attention. Remember, the Pokémon world, especially Kanto, isn't very well known for having vehicles just lying around. Although the truck is just a random cosmetic tile, Game Freak still decided to tease believers of the rumor in both Kanto remakes. If you manage to surf over to where the truck is and follow the newly added path to the south, a hidden lava cookie can be obtained in Fire Red and Leaf Green. And in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, a hidden revive can be found that respawns daily. Circling back around to Morimoto for a second, although he has been a Game Freak employee since the company's inception, Mew is one of only six Pokémon he has ever created. The other five being Diglett, Mankey, Tauros, Shuckle, and Piloswan. If you transfer any of these six Pokémon into Sun and Moon from the 3DS eShop versions of the Gen 1 or Gen 2 games, then Morimoto himself, or rather his NPC replica, will tell you stories about their creation in Hia Hia City, including that entire bit about Mew I just told you about. So, as you probably know, originally Celebi could only be caught in the Japanese version of Pokémon Crystal and nowhere else in the world. However, the 3DS eShop version of Pokémon Crystal actually adds the Celebi event for all versions of the game activating automatically once the player enters the Hall of Fame and goes to the Goldenrod City Pokémon Center. This makes Celebi one of only three mythical Pokémon who is available to catch in the wild and not given to you through an event. Also, I'm deeply sorry for making this video after the 3DS eShop went offline. It seems like this info would have been handy about a month ago. But don't worry, I have heard the 3DS is surprisingly easy to do things with that Nintendo doesn't want me to talk about, but I'm gonna allude to it anyway, so you know what I mean, right? I sure hope so, otherwise that entire line just sounded really weird. Also, perhaps as a form of an apology for gating Celebi from Westerners for nearly 20 years, in the 3DS version of Pokémon Crystal, the Celebi you catch in Ilex Forest is guaranteed to have five perfect IVs, making it a bit better than most mythical and legendary Pokémon who were guaranteed only three perfect IVs as of Gen 6. And although I'm sure most people watching probably know this by now, since it was revealed all the way back in 2008, I figured I'd still add in the fact that Celebi was originally what was contained inside of Professor Ivy's GS Ball, which Ash delivered to Kurt and Johto. The original plan was for Ash to free Celebi from the ball and have it be the star of a long arc in the Johto series. However, once plans were made for the fourth movie, Celebi Voice of the Forest, the arc was viewed as redundant and the decision was made for the entire GS Ball arc to be shelved and forgotten about. Originally, Jirachi was intended to be shiny-locked by the developers. However, Jirachis obtained via Pokémon Channel or the North American Pokémon Coliseum bonus disc were incorrectly left unlocked, meaning a few shiny versions slipped through the cracks. If you were one of the lucky few to obtain a shiny Jirachi in Gen 3, then you probably found out in Gen 6 that it was banned from any online usage, or from entering Pokémon Bank. Since, according to Game Freak's records, they had never officially given away a shiny Jirachi. However, that eventually changed in late 2014 when the Japanese exclusive Tanabata Shiny Jirachi was given away, finally legalizing Shiny Jirachi nearly 12 years later. Speaking of Tanabata, or the Japanese Star Festival, this holiday is largely what Jirachi's lore and design are based on. The festival only lasts for seven days over the summer, which is why Jirachi is said to only stay awake for seven days. The three appendages on Jirachi's head are also meant to represent Tanzaku, which are pieces of paper you write your wishes on and hang from a bamboo tree during the festival. 
As alluded to earlier, Deoxys is one of the other mythical Pokémon catchable without an event needed, as it gets added as a required boss fight during the Delta episode of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. In any game nowadays, it's well known that to change Deoxys' form, you need to have it touch one of the various meteorites. However, in Gen 3, this was not yet accounted for, and Deoxys' forms were all gated to specific games. The normal form is the default for Pokémon Ruby, Sapphire, Colosseum, and XD, Attack form is exclusive to Fire Red, Defense form is exclusive to Leaf Green, and Speed form is exclusive to Emerald. However, you can't even trade a different form into the other games, as each game only has one Deoxys form coded in. So basically, if you tried trading an Attack form Deoxys to Emerald, it would change to Speed form. Due to this odd quirk, only Speed form Deoxys is formally banned from the Emerald Battle Frontier because the game quite literally doesn't have to worry about the other three's existence. Manaphy is one of the few mythical Pokémon who was initially gated behind a spin-off title, as the Manaphy Egg was originally obtained from Pokémon Ranger. Since the Sinnoh region games require you to see every Pokémon in the region in order to obtain the national decks, there is a workaround for players who didn't buy Ranger. Simply go to Mr. Backlot's room at the Pokémon Mansion and look at his book to register Manaphy as seen in your Pokédex. Manaphy is also one of the few things new material was written for in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. While most of the game text-wise is identical to the originals, in the Canalave Library a brand new book is introduced, hinting to the existence of Overquill and giving vague instructions on how to do the Manaphy quest for Legends Arceus, a game that hadn't yet come out at that point. In Pokémon Diamond and Pearl, a well-known cheat where you can walk through walls, usually requiring an action replay, would allow you to run across the sea and go to New Moon Island where you could catch Darkrai before its official release. Due to the way the Gen 4 games load in their areas though, this glitch is achievable through other, more complex means, and is commonly referred to as tweaking or hole punching. Generally, this requires usage of the bike in very specific places on the map to enter the void. But in the Japanese versions of Diamond and Pearl, there exists another, much easier to replicate glitch known as the Surf Glitch, where you can press A on the door in Elite Four Aaron's chamber and be given the option to surf into the void. Once you've done that, you can surf all the way across the map in Diamond and Pearl's gloriously slow surf speed to New Moon Island and catch Darkrai. The same methods of walking through walls, tweaking, and the Surf Glitch can also be used to find Shaman at Flower Paradise. Speaking of Shaman, it's also associated with another glitch in Pokémon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the faithful games that they are, the Void Glitch, unintentionally returned in the pre-patch versions of these games. Once again, allowing you to glitch yourself to both New Moon Island and Flower Paradise. However, this time Darkrai is missing, but strangely, Shaman is not. And it's entirely possible to catch Shaman without needing Oak's Letter to activate the event. This has been patched out as of version 1.1.3. For the last 15 years, there has been a raging internet debate about exactly how to pronounce this next Pokémon. Officially, its name was Arceus in Pokémon Battle Revolution and other promotional material in early Gen 4. Arceus restored its health! However, once the English dub of the 12th movie, Arceus and the Jewel of Life, began production, the voice director and voice of Arceus itself, Tom Wayland, revealed that the Pokémon Company International had made the last-minute decision to change the pronunciation to Arceus. So don't worry, it wasn't the Mandela Effect, it actually was called Arceus initially. The reason this was done was to avoid complications with the soft C sound in British territories where the beginning of Arceus' name sounds a bit crude to them. This is actually the second biggest thing the Brits have ruined since the creation of food. Ironically, in Gen 4, despite Arceus being statistically the strongest Pokémon introduced, in practice it was actually comparably weaker than most legendaries. Since the Hall of Origin event was scrapped and never officially released, Arceus could only be obtained at level 100 through distributions. And back in Gen 4, if a Pokémon was level 100, it could no longer gain boosts from EVs, as they used to be rewarded upon leveling up. So every legal Arceus in that generation is much weaker than you would think because they all have a grand total of zero EVs. Hi there! If you've learned something new today, then you should definitely subscribe! It's free, and you get to keep learning more cool things about Pokémon, and it makes me feel good, so that's nice. Victini is a Pokémon whose creation was ordered specifically from Jinichi Masuda, who stated that he wanted to make a Pokémon that comforts people when it's by their side, like it will help them pass their exams. The idea of it being a lucky Pokémon is reinforced by its design, which takes inspiration from the V sign, or two fingers held up, which in many cultures is meant to symbolize peace or victory. Victini also has a bit of Roman lore imbued in its design, as it's partially based on the Roman god of victory, Nike, 
which is where the uh, butt wings come from. And as fate would have it, V is the Roman numeral for five, the generation that Victini represents. Its fire typing, its home at the Liberty Garden, and its association with hope and victory may also make it a personification of the Statue of Liberty. Keldeo is the third and final mythical Pokemon who is currently catchable in the wild, as it can be found in the Crown Tundra after catching the other three Swords of Justice. The reason why it appears in the Crown Tundra of all places is likely because its design draws inspiration from the Scottish legend of the Kelpie a shape-shifting water spirit that sometimes takes the form of a horse or a pony. Since the Crown Tundra is based on Scotland, there's no more fitting place for this mythical Pokémon to make a rare appearance in the wild. Meloetta was the first mythical Pokémon to not be featured in a movie. With Gen 5 only lasting for three years, but having four mythicals, Meloetta was instead featured in an arc of episodes during the black and white anime second season. This arc of episodes may have come from the original concept the writers had planned to use for Celebi in the Johto Saga. Furthermore, the climax of this arc, Operation Tempest, features many of the scrapped plot elements and even some repurposed footage from the Team Rocket vs. Team Plasma arc that was cancelled due to the 2011 Japan Tsunami and Earthquake. It also features the only confrontation between Ash and Giovanni in the entire series outside of the Mewtwo Return special. Ash loses in about 5 seconds as you might expect, and it's really kinda underwhelming. For Genesect, we'll be discussing its place of origin, or modification I should say, more so than the Pokémon itself, the P2 Laboratory. The P2 Laboratory's name is likely a reference to the infamous P2 Lodge, a secret location in Italy where crime syndicates would gather. In the Spanish and Italian versions of the game, the P2 Laboratory's name is changed to Laboratory P and P, likely to avoid any lingering controversy. The laboratory also houses another secret aside from Genesect, that being an unused white room in the southern corner. However, despite the location and file name, more digging has discovered that this was actually a leftover beta map of Nuvema Town. It was likely left inside the P2 lab because of how remote the location is, making it a bit harder for Snoops to discover. Obviously, it didn't work. Dialancy has a rather strange relationship with the Pokémon Carbink, being a mutation of the Pokémon rather than an outright evolution. In a way, it's almost like a Paradox Pokémon, but introduced 10 years earlier. Speaking of which, since Diancie is coded into Pokémon Scarlet and Violet, it actually strangely brings Carbink along with it. As of recording this video, Carbink is currently the only Pokémon outside of Paldia's decks coded into the game that is not a mythical, legendary starter Pokémon or branched evolution like Quagsire. Gee, it sure would be nice to get some actual material in these Pokémon nearly a decade later, but I'm not holding my breath over here. Hoopa is a Pokémon based on a genie, but unlike genies, or Jirachi for that matter, Hoopa is not known for granting wishes. However, the common trope of genies granting three wishes may be reflected through the mechanic where it can only stay in its unbound form for three days at a time. Similar to Jirachi, though, Hoopa is known for teleporting valuable things rather than outright granting wishes, most notably gold or legendary Pokémon. While the connection is never overtly made during Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire's postgame, context from the 18th movie, Hoopa and the Clash of Ages, certainly infers that Hoopa is behind the mysterious wormholes present all across Hoenn. Volcanion, like many modern-day mythicals, is known more for its lack of content than anything else. Many have theorized that the locked power plant doors on Kalos Route 13 were meant to house a Volcanion event that never occurred. But in X and Y, some supplemental information about it is found in a journal at the Lumios Press stating that Volcanion is revered in southern Kalos for likely being the cause of a giant mountain range inexplicably disappearing, creating the land they live on today. This is likely a reference to the mountainous region of Occitania in southern France. They even have their own regional flag, which curiously shares the same colors with Volcanion, and even a ring of dots similar to the markings on Volcanion's cannons. Perhaps this is a subregion that was ultimately cut from X and Y's development, though curiously it occupies the stretch of land that would connect Paldia and Kalos. So who knows, until the DLC drops there's always a possibility it could be added. Volcanion also gets a mention at the Mallville TV station in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where it's revealed that Frontier Brain Brandon, who is not yet a Frontier Brain in this timeline, is the one who ultimately discovered Volcanion's existence. According to Brandon, he has observed this Pokémon living in the Johto, Sinnoh, and Kalos regions. Though it's not made clear if this is the same Volcanion or three different entities. While Magirna is not catchable in the wild like Celebi, Deoxys, or Keldeo, it was the first mythical Pokémon to be made available through a never-ending event. Simply scan this QR code with your 3DS and then talk to the man in the Howley City Mall to obtain one. But while Magirna giveth, it also taketh away. 
as it has not one, but two completely unobtainable shiny forms. One of them has even been featured in the anime belonging to Lily's family. This completely grey shiny form wasn't even added until Generation 8. As in Gen 7, the shiny black Nagirna is meant to be the shiny version of the original colored form. Is that confusing? Yes, just note there's two versions of regular Magirna, and there are two that are shiny. But this shiny wasn't added until later. Meanwhile, the non-shiny original color Magirna serves as the grand prize for anyone who completes their national Pokedex up to Eternatus. However, prior to a patch in mid-2020, you originally needed to have an entire living Pokedex deposited in Pokemon Home to obtain it. Marchetto's powered-up form when it attacks actually has a name, being known as the Zenith form. The Zenith form is most notable for being the only way most people can tell the difference between its regular form and shiny form. Curiously, Zenith is also what the Z in Z-Move stands for, and with Marshadow being the only mythical Pokémon from this generation to possess its own Z-Move, it appears there is meant to be a connection here that Game Freak completely forgot to tell us about. Huh. Zeraora is based on the Raiju, a mythical creature said to be the embodiment of lightning in animal form. This is the same creature that Raichu and Raikou are also based on, hence their names. Truthfully, while the Raichu most commonly comes in the form of a tiger or a wolf, it can basically be any animal. Anyway, I wish I had more for this guy, but uh, that's about it. Despite Meltan and Melmetal originating from Generation 7, they are not classified as being from the Alola region. To this day, in Pokemon Go, Meltan and Melmetal are both listed under an unknown region. Most likely due to the fact that they actually come from the real world rather than any place in the core series. Zarude is the only mythical Pokemon so far to be introduced mid-generation via a patch made to the game. Zeraora and Meltan were also introduced mid-generation, but they were not compatible with the previous games in their gen. It's unknown why Zarude was the only mythical Pokemon introduced in Gen 8, but this may have been due to the pandemic delaying and or cancelling any planned Pokemon movies, which typically feature new mythical Pokemon. Zarude's movie, Secrets of the Jungle, also had to be delayed nearly six months in Japan due to the pandemic. Because of the film's lackluster performance at the box office, as well as the departure of Ash Ketchum, it's highly possible that any movies and mythicals by extension have been put on indefinite hiatus. Now, watch them reveal a new one as soon as this video goes up. You're welcome! And with that, thanks for watching today's video! Be sure to check out the other fact videos if you haven't already, and remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.